What's up people? We are back and we are going to be showing you a new product that we just recently purchased. Uh, we have taken a break from brewing the hot summer months. I do all my brewing in my garage and it's just too damn hot in the summertime. So we did have to take a break, but we worked on our other YouTube channels and I'll tell you a little bit more about those towards the end of the video. But anyways, we have upgraded our brewing game. Uh, we picked up this mega pot here, got it from Northern Brewer and it's an eight gallon version. It's the drill pot with the uh, spout, the spigot on it and the uh, thermometer. So we're going to unbox it. We haven't taken it out of the box. We opened it up and look at it, but we haven't pulled it out yet. We're going to do that with you. We've been enjoying a nice, Wheat beer here, not one I brewed, but uh, still a good beer. Set that off to the side, but I know y'all are happy I'm back and I'm happy to be back. Uh, moving forward, most of my brewing is probably gonna be done from the fall to the spring and then I'll take a break in the summertime. So, uh, but I do have other ventures that I, I uh, participate in during the summertime. So. But let's take a look at this mega pot. Let's see what we got here. So we bought that cheap ass, thin ass stainless steel pot from Northern Brewer that was awful. And we brewed, oh gosh, I think only a couple of uh, batches in it and it was just terrible. So I'm sorry for anyone that had bought that thing. It was a piece of junk. And I wasn't gonna, I got a kegging system. I'm planning on doing a lot of five gallon brews and I didn't want to waste uh, a lot of time with that, that sorry pot. So if I'm going to brew five gallons, I'm going to brew in a good pot. And this is what I've decided to purchase. So uh, first off, I believe we've got our lid here. This would be a pretty solid lid. Nice. It's got a insulated handle. I like that really heavy and let's see we've got some parts here looks like we got so we got our spigot there and also some other fittings here's our thermometer let's take a look at it it's a dial thermometer you know I could have went I can't remember exactly what I paid for this, but I could have went cheap and got the one that was uh, not drilled and uh, didn't have all this, but you know, you get what you pay for. And I plan to use this for a long time. That's a really nice dial thermometer there. Take a look at that. And it comes with uh, some other fittings here. Looks like the part that this uh, screws into. And then there's a washer in here as well. But uh, we'll keep going. I think the last part in here is going to be the pot itself. So, get it out of here and then we can move this box out of the way. Nothing else in there. They packed it very well. Uh, it's not going to get damaged. As you can see, this one is packaged very, very well. Nice looking pot. I'm pretty happy with that so far. I haven't, haven't brewed anything in it yet, but uh, it looks pretty good. So got our pre-drilled holes here. Gosh, uh, the bottom of it, I can feel it. It is super thick. I like that. Heavy. This thing is pretty heavy good look at the inside. Look at those handles. I think I'm gonna be happy. I've heard of good things about these. I read the reviews and uh, I think this is one of the best brewing kettles there is out there. I mean there may be some that are a little more expensive but for the dollar I don't think you're gonna beat this. My first impressions are very good. Uh, riveted handles. 
of course, insulated, kind of rubbery. I like that. You're not going to lose your grip on it. Although with the, the spigot on it, you're not going to really need to be picking it up a whole lot. Um, this is eight gallon capacity. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see inside. I'll try to hold it where you can see, but it's got graduations on the inside. Maybe you can see them. I don't know. But uh, every gallon all the way up to eight. So from one to eight, you got graduations there on the inside. And there's another look up. Try to hold it where you can see it. But I like that a lot. Uh, I think I'm going to be happy with this. Let's see how it fits. Good deal. So I've upgraded my game. Now, Brewing Daddy's been brewing <laughs> with a, a basically a turkey cooker burner uh, so with the spigot uh, I'm not gonna be able to use that because it's deep and it sits down and about that far down inside and it's got like a little rail around it so I didn't realize that when I bought this but I have been wanting to uh, buy another burner uh, something made just for brewing because they are a little bit different they have a lot more of the little propane uh, uh, jets, I guess you would call it, or little, little holes where all the propane comes out, the burn, the actual flame, uh, and it gets a lot more even burn or, or uh, heat to the pot. Uh, but my turkey cooker, it's it, you know, it only has maybe 10 or 12. But uh, I did buy an, a uh, burner that I'm going to use, and I'll I'll review it and unbox it and show it to you, and we'll uh, we'll test it out along with this. Kettle, I don't think I'm going to have any complaints. Uh, like I said, I, I read the reviews. They look good. Uh, this is a quality product. It's super, super heavy. I'm not sure what it weighs, but gosh, I'd say close to 10 pounds at least. Close to that with the lid and all. With everything on it, I'm sure it's 10 pounds. Um, so nice looking piece of stainless. Uh, we're going to put everything together. So we'll... Uh, We'll show you how it all goes together. So right now we're zeroed out and we are looking at, wow, 12 pounds, 12 pounds, two ounces. And that's not including the hardware on it. So there's probably a whole nother pound here of hardware. So total pound weight, we're probably looking at about 13 pounds with everything on it. That's pretty impressive. Uh, without anything, just a lid in the pot, 12 pounds is really, really pretty heavy. So uh, I'm, I, I guessed a little bit low on that when I said 10 pounds. All right, so we got all our parts here. I'm going to set this scale out of the way. All right, so we got all our parts here. Uh, I'm going to take the lid off so we can work without the lid, of course. I'll be able to get down inside of it. Uh, first thing first, we're going to put the thermometer. So what you do is you take the washer here, just slide it over, and it's going to go in the upper hole. And you want to make sure the dial's right side up. And then uh, you're going to screw this on the back side. So it's going to go just like that. And then you'll tighten it. And, uh, you'll just hand tighten it down. It's got a o-ring and then of course you got a hex on this side that you can kind of torque it some more but uh there's the look at the o-ring that's got on it so uh, we'll torque it down with a wrench the adjustable if you can see that there but that's how i'm putting it on We'll hand tighten it. And you can kind of snug it a little bit with the, uh, just by turning it. I'm not sure if my adjustable is going to fit down behind this. So it doesn't look like it. My adjustable is a little bit too thick. So uh, we'll just try to do it by hand. So. I've kind of just turned it past where I want it to be. 
then I'm holding it on the inside steady and just twisting it to where it should line up. And you can get it pretty tight. You don't want to over tighten it. I mean, you check it and make sure you don't have leaks. But I think we're good there. Looks like the dial is uh, pretty well centered. I, think I did a pretty good job. It doesn't need to be super, super, super tight. This is what it looks like on the inside. So, I think we'll be fine with that. It's pretty snug. I don't think I want to torque it any more than what I've done. It's kind of like a how you should put an oil filter on. You should tighten it as tight as you can by hand. Alright, so I'm happy with that. Um, next step here is you got this little nipple here it goes through the body this so this side which has o-rings on the very inside of it hopefully you can see those there's o-rings on the inside um this is going to slide your little uh take up uh tube is going to slide in it once you get it attached and uh, the tapered side here will go to the outside and your uh, valve will go on the outside. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna loosen this up, just take one of them off, or the one that will come off. This one's actually fixed. You're gonna take this nut off. You're gonna remove one of the O-rings, just one. And then you're going to slide that through the hole there. You're going to put this O-ring on the other side. And then the nut on the back side. And we'll show you in a second. And we're, like I said, we're not going to over tighten this one either snug it down also you don't want to destroy your o-rings so 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 you can see that's what it looks like in there that's a good look at it so we're going to torque this down a little bit use my adjustable one I don't have a wrench that'll fit this. I guess I need to buy more wrenches. Because uh, my biggest wrench will not fit it. And we're just going to tighten it down. I'm going to make sure that the. Uh, I'm going to have to put a wrench on the inside too. Make sure that nut is not uh, turning. And like I said, just snug it down. You don't have to get it super, super tight. Just snug it down. And I think we're, we're good there. All right, so you got a couple of different threads here. They're gonna need some of uh, this uh, pipe uh, sealing tape on them. So what you're gonna wanna do is just pull off a piece about, I don't know, yay long. And you'll just wrap this around your threads here. Just so you get a good seal. And then you're gonna thread your once your valve handle just points straight out, you're gonna thread this on the end. Probably have to hold it up like this to get it on there. And uh, you may have to use your wrenches on it to get it tight as you want it so we'll go back to that pretty sad that I don't have wrenches big enough to fit this but it's okay and you just want to snug it down it don't have to be it don't have to be super super tight
Just gonna make sure I got this uh, this guy covered. Kind of and I did have to come back and tighten that with just a hair more because it wasn't quite all the way there. But now it's pretty good. Um, so this part, you're gonna put this on the inside. So down here, looking at the bottom, you're gonna slide it inside. That's the side that's got the uh, O-rings on the inside. And you're just gonna push it in as far as you can push it. And as you can see, if you look, you can see, now I got it in there. You should be able to see it. And it's pointed downward. So it's gonna suck all your, uh, your liquid out. So that's exactly how it should look on the inside. Now we got one more, we got this barb that's threaded that's gonna go on the end here. And we're gonna to wanna to put some, uh, some sealing tape on it. So we'll grab a small piece of that. Get all that off of there. Don't need a, too big of a piece. I just wanna make sure that you're Threads are sealing up. So you just wrap it around good. And I think I might have wrapped this the opposite way. You should wrap it the same way your threads are going to tighten so that it doesn't uh, pull it off as you're threading it in. I don't know how much it matters, but I always try to do that. And I think I actually threaded it the opposite way. So now we're gonna, we're gonna tighten this bar up. I think we're there. All right, so we're all good now. Um, and that's the open position and for some reason my uh, oh it's got a uh, be, be careful with your valve here I just realized it's got a like a safety mechanism right here it slides up and down I was trying to turn it so be careful with that uh, I was trying to turn it and not didn't realize that I had that on there so when you open it you got to lift that up and then turn it Feels pretty good. Looks good. I think we uh, we got it all together correctly. I did read my instructions before I did that, of course. So just check your instructions. Looks good. Uh, we'll check it for leaks before we start uh, a batch brewing. We'll fill it with some water and just let it sit for a few minutes and sit, make sure that it's not going to leak. And if it does, you just come back and tighten up. You know all your fittings. Um, you're going to need to get a piece of hose to attach here so you can drain your your wort into your fermenter or whatever you're putting it into uh, once you are done brewing. I do like this, uh, having the, the uh, valve here. This thing is so big and trying to pour five gallons out of this is going to be rough. So uh, I really can appreciate the valve uh, just to be able to uh, drain everything out of the pot and I like having this thermometer not having to fumble with the thermometer thermometer sticking in and out I like to see what my temperatures are so looks like a great pot I think it's gonna work awesome for us um, later on we'll show you us brewing with it maybe in a later video and give you our thoughts in but for now I'm gonna say that this is a good buy I want to believe, I think I paid around $120 for it, but I don't, don't hold me to that. Um, it was on sale, so I got a little bit off, but uh, pretty happy with it. All right, so we appreciate you joining us for um, the unboxing of this Megapot 1.2 eight gallon stainless steel brewing kettle. Um, you can pick this up at Northern Brewer. I'm sure they sell them at other places. Um, we actually have a new sponsor. I'll tell you about them a little bit. The, uh, their name is More Beer, morebeer.com. 
There's a link in our description. If you're looking for supplies, they carry stainless pots. Not this particular brand, but one very similar. They also carry recipes, brewing supplies, uh, fermenters, everything. Um, you're gonna see me brewing their recipes in the near future. Uh, once I finish up, I, I got about six or seven more Northern Brewer recipes that I need to brew. And then I'm gonna start uh, brewing up the more beer recipes. So check out morebeer.com. They are a really great supplier. They got great prices. They always offer coupons. Uh, if you sign up for their mailing list, you'll get a coupon right away. So check them out. Click the link in the uh, in the description and hit that like button. Uh, subscribe to our channel if you aren't already, and check out BrewingDaddy.com. I did tell you I would tell you a little bit about some of our other uh, ventures. I do have another YouTube channel. I actually have two. Uh, one of them is a outdoors traveling channel. It's fair, relatively new, um, but it's picking up steam fast. It's called Adventures in the South. You can uh, visit our website and I have links to all of our social media and YouTube, and that's adventuresinthesouth.com. Also, uh, I have I cover uh, college sports. I have a, uh, a sports website. GamecockSportsNews.com. I cover South Carolina Gamecock football, uh, and we'll be covering some basketball. So uh, check that out. I also have a YouTube for that as well. And you can search uh, YouTube for it. Just search Gamecock Sports News, or, and you can also go to Game Sport, GamecockSportsNews.com. Um, and on Twitter, it's GamecockSN at GamecockSN is our handle, and Facebook's Game, Gamecock Sports News. All right. Well, we appreciate you joining us. I hope you all found this video helpful and we'll see you next time. Peace out, people.